finder, not a collector. I love to discover items. I like to discover them by chance. I like the feeling that they're finding me too. I think it was sparked by my mother who used to drag me along to consignment stores and antique shops and the flea market. I loved to run free in the flea market and just be among this kind of crazy profusion of treasures. And it's such a beautiful connection to the past. I can't remember a time when I haven't been fascinated by the glamour and the mystery of the past. And vintage items are such a immediate and deep connection to other times. This is my little flapper purse. I bought it on Ruby Lane. It wasn't until the 20th century that women even carried purses. Men used to carry women's money. And in the 1920s is really when women started carrying purses. They had money to spend and places to go, makeup to put on, and so they needed a little place to put it all. Um, this is a beaded bag. It would have been for nighttime adventures. I can just imagine a young woman going out dancing with this little purse um, on her wrist. This is a choker necklace from the 1920s. The 1920s is really when we started to see costume jewelry. So it was no longer that only wealthy women wore jewelry. Um, all kinds of really beautiful items were made and they were accessible to all kinds of women. This would have been something a young woman or a woman would have worn at nighttime. It's, you know, really kind of smashing looking. It's uh, fun. It has really that energy and spirit of the 1920s, the glamour and the glitz of that time. This is a Brownie 620. It's a camera that was made in the 1930s. It was made really for women who were looking for beautiful objects. It's about the size of a purse, not too hard to carry around. Um, it has that sort of beautiful design. And it was also just wondrous, I think, for women of that time to be able to take pictures until these kind of cameras came along, you had to go to a portrait studio. So it was a way of being able to take photographs on your own and to really just be able to enjoy the pleasure of taking pictures of yourself and your friends and your family. This is a coat that I just happened to find in a consignment store close to my home. I was looking through the racks one day in my favorite consignment shop and I came across this beautiful coat, but it wasn't really until I saw the tag that I found out about its story and its history. So this coat had belonged to one of the early film actresses in Hollywood. Her name was Audrey Munson and she was the first woman to appear in film completely naked as an artist model. And she also had come to San Francisco in 1915. She was the star of the Panama Pacific Exposition here. And she left her coat behind in San Francisco. A hundred years later, I wind up finding it in a consignment shop right close to my house. It's a beautiful embroidered coat. It's got hand embroidery with gold thread. And it's the kind of coat that a woman would have worn to the opera in the 19 teens, 1920s. A statement piece is what you'd call it. And it just has a really exquisite history and just a very special connection to the past for me. When I was writing The Bohemians, I was able to give Dorothea and her assistant Caroline something of my love for old vintage items. Dorothea didn't have much money when she was setting up her first photography studio in San Francisco. But as I read the descriptions about that studio, I was so taken by the description of the splendor of that space. She and her assistant were able to find objects from flea markets and antique shops and create a really beautiful atmosphere for their sitters. That space 
created a kind of fantasy world for the women who came to Dorothea Lange's sittings. And she was able to forge a connection. When they came in, they felt like they were entering a dream and that they were the stars. She was able to capture them in their most disarming selves. And I think that kind of connection that she made with her sitters is something that she would carry throughout her lifetime as a photographer and that you would see it eventually in portraits like Migrant Mother that became so iconic. She had a really wonderful way of connecting with the people that sat for her and the atmosphere and the environment she created was a really important part of that.